CTV News Channel. The civil war in Somalia has been ongoing for more than 20 years. The fighting has been devastating for civilians and especially for women. There's uh, an increase in sexual violence and rapes that are carried out by warring factions. Former journalist Amanda Lindout was held by insurgents in Somalia for 15 months. And she's the founder of the Global Enrichment Foundation and is now involved in a new campaign. It's called She Will. Amanda Lindout joins us now in studio. And great to have you with us. Um, ex explain just first, you just got back from Somalia, I understand, I did. right? Yeah. For a lot of us, when we think of you know women's rights, the plight of women in a place like Somalia, uh, we know, given the political instability, the fact that they are still engaged in the civil war, it seems so hopeless. How could you help a woman in that country? How can you do it? What's feasible? Well, Somalia's newest crisis is this increase in sexual violence against women. So many of us are aware of the devastating famine that occurred in Somalia right. in 2011. And many women were on the move during that time, leaving their villages to settle in internally displaced people's camps and were very exposed and vulnerable and because of that the number of women being sexually violated really increased and because there is a lack of effective central government in a country like Somalia there are very few support services mm -hmm. so it's really up to organizations like mine to be able to provide services that can um, give those women medical care, therapy, and opportunities to rebuild their lives. And I think through services like ours, on for the individuals who they're touching, it's absolutely possible for them to recover from that sort of devastating um, event. I mean, how devastating is rape? Well, as a survivor of sexual violence myself, I think I can speak to um, how devastating it is. You know, when I came back from Somalia, I felt like a part of myself was broken. And so fortunate here in Canada to be able to have the sort of support services that I, I needed. And now, you know, two and a half years later, mm -hmm. I feel quite healed. And so I really know the value in being able to provide those sort of services to the women in Somalia as well. So difficult for someone who has endured that, for sure. What was that moment for you, given you, you being held captive where you decided was it was it there where you decided I can uh, get through this and I can challenge channel this into something positive or was it much later on that you came about that decision to do what it is you're doing now to help others it was actually within that experience itself during some of the darkest moments in captivity I really looked for something positive that I could hang on to some light within that mm -hmm. situation just to get me through each day and I found that focusing on this idea that if I made it out alive, I could do something to help Somali and to make that country a better place so it's not producing these generations of young people like my captors who are really shaped by the, by the violence around them. It's really what helped me survive. And when I came home, it was just a few months after coming back to Canada, so in April of 2010, that I established the Global Enrichment Foundation and really began living that dream and fulfilling that vision. Mm -hmm. And you do have a book coming out that's going to detail some of what you personally endured, is that right? Yeah, there'll be more details than I've talked about to date in the book. The book's coming out in the spring of, of mm -hmm. 2013. Simon & Schuster is publishing it here in Canada. It will be called A House in the Sky. But I haven't disclosed those details um, because it's very uh, tied to my own sense of, of, of dignity. So while there will be more than I've talked about to date in my mm -hmm. book, it's still probably not what people are expecting. It's not an explicit tell-all of no. all the horrific events that But you happened. are reliving what was a tragedy, mm -hmm. what was a horrific time in your life, but doing that, uh, hoping what the result is, people understanding it's that more? No, it's not so much for me that people need to understand the horrors of what I went through, but I think there is tremendous value in people understanding the personal transformation that can occur in the midst of really mm. extreme adversity, and I lived that, and many people live that. We all face real challenges in our life, and you know, it, it, perhaps my story is an example of uh, how I got through it. Perhaps others might find inspiration in that, and, and I've got really gone on to be able to create something very positive out of an incredibly difficult situation. And that's what she will 
continues, right? So talk to us about this initiative that's underway. Yeah, so she, well, I'm really excited about that. this um, initiative. It's really the focus of the Global Enrichment Foundation this spring. When I became aware of this rape crisis occurring in Somalia, I really felt a responsibility to do something about it. And so we've partnered with Fartoon Adan, who's an amazing Somali activist in Mogadishu, Somalia, to create She Will, which is, which is essentially the first support services available to survivors of rape mm -hmm. in Somalia. So provide providing them with opportunity to access medical care, education, um, economic opportunities through small business grants, and it really giving them the tools to rebuild their lives. Mm -hmm. So for more information, there's a website, I take it? Or? Yeah, so people can go to our website, which is globalenrichmentfoundation.com, for more information, and um, all donations are tax credible. Okay. Appreciate you coming in and Thanks. look forward to hearing more of your story. And it's, uh, it's an initiative I'm sure many Canadians will want to take part in. So thank you. Amanda Lindout joining us. Do stay with us. We'll have more news after this short break.